our first session speaker is Bennett Yi from Oasis Labs, and Bennett will be discussing shades of finality and commit chain scaling. Slight modification, we're, we're talking about validating bridges since that's what is checking what the commit chain or what often is called the commit chain. So this is joint work uh, with uh, Don Song, uh, Patrick McCory, and uh, Chris Buckland. So some of this stuff is everybody understands pretty well. Um, so the question is, what is finality, right? So Bitcoin, Ethereum v1 is final when it's committed on chain, but that means what? It means it's not going to be on a, on a short branch, right? And the reason that we care about this is so users can depend on its effects on the state of the blockchain, right? How much money I've spent, how much money is deposited affects whether I can propose another transaction. So what is finality? Well, pr proof of work uh, blockchains, usually six deep, but we have two colors here, but really it should kind of, you know, probability, it should kind of fade in and out or whatever. Um, it's probabilistic because you don't know um, if you're on a short chain until you've had uh, more blocks uh, in included. For uh, proof of stake blockchains, as soon as the consensus committee have reached agreement and extended the chain using special signatures. Um, people talk about uh, instant finality, right? It's If it's on the chain, you, everybody can ver verify signatures and, and, and we can rely on the results. For layer two uh, virtual machines, what's going on is there's a bridge contract that is verifying state transitions. And so these off-chain compute is uh, getting their state transitions verified and that is final when the transaction for the bridge contract reaches finality. It, it, it decides to accept it and it reaches finality. That sounds great, but what happens, uh, you know, from a more systems viewpoint, what happens when there is something like a zero date, right? Um, whether it is a core contract or you know, in the underlying blockchain code itself, right? Uh, often a hard fork is needed to, to address this, right? Um, sometimes we can just beg people to return the tokens that was misdelivered um, when it's not a core contract. Um, uh, but if it's catastrophic, there's not much we can do as, other than something like a, a hard fork. You know, governance type of decisions are needed and, and, and things tend to get kind of messy. Because hard forks can undo transactions, right? So it can change uh, state arbitrarily. So that's a, a different uh, thing that's going on. So some background, right? Um, blockchains is a pen-only log, well-defined virtual machine. Bitcoin uh, puts in the log entries just the transactions, right? The state of the virtual machine is implicit, right? Everybody has to figure it out for themselves. Uh, Ethereum contains both the transactions and what's what's the state root, um, and the state root summarizes the the VM state. So that's that's pretty uh, everybody understands that stuff. Uh, layer two virtual machines um, have some differences, right? So um, Arbitrum's optimistic rollup does decoupled uh, explicit state. So transactions are are logged on the underlying blockchain in Ethereum uh, before they're executed. And then the virtual machines uh, compute the, the resultant state and the bridge contract, the verifying uh, bridge contract is uh, going to say yay or nay, right? There, there's disputation uh, periods and all that stuff. Uh, eventually it says it's accepted and that, and that is when the state is decided. And that's, so that's decoupled because it happens later. Um, other ones like uh, ZK rollups, the uh, transaction ordering is decided by entities on uh, in the layer two, and the ordering is part of the proof. In Oasis Network, we use uh, uh, discrepancy detection. Um, an agreement is on a single value that has both uh, the transaction order and the resultant state. So state is is pretty important. Um, and of course, um, in the past, Bitcoin has had uh, checkpointing. Uh, this, is, this is wiring in in the client where 
uh, a particular block number essentially has a, a, a certain given state, so we don't have to go all the way back to to uh, to Genesis. You know, tightly coupled is is useful. Um, it it it. it, it it's uh, it's okay when when the layer two is fast and it's cheap, uh, but decoupling has some other advantages, um, uh, and uh, you know it, it allows the the transactions to be committed um, at a at a faster rate than than or at the average rate at which uh, compute can happen. Right, you can you can actually allow uh, expensive compute. Um, that as long as it doesn't happen uh, too frequently. What we're uh, looking at is these different notions of finality. Log finality is what's in the log, right? So there are rules for what kind of data can be appended to the log. Uh, and of course, who can append a new block. The idea, of course, is once an entry is made, right, nobody can dispute it. However, the meaning of the data in the log entry depends on other semantic rules that are in many ways independent of the fact that the entry was made. What we're separating out here is this notion of transaction order finality, right? Once the, the sequence of transactions, right? These are transactions are basically queried functions that map from uh, virtual machine state to a new virtual machine state. Um, once the order of uh, transactions have been determined, and, and we can, in principle, compute the state from the genesis block, right, all the way to whatever is the last committed uh, transaction. We've named the state. We may not have computed it yet. We don't have to, right? It's fully determined in a mathematical sense. This means that like in Ethereum, the state root is not really necessary, right? But it's a it's this useful optimization. Of course, state is useful, and so state finality is it, it can also be a different part of a message, a different type of message being logged. We use consensus for that too, right? We we want to uh, agree on on the state because you know. Users really want to know what the state is as opposed to having to compute it themselves. They want to use block explorers and, and figure out uh, what the account analysis are and, and so forth. But the observation here is just like in uh, optimistic rollups, right? In general, state doesn't have to be uh, logged in the same block uh, as the transactions. And that's very important if we want to allow the compute in the VM to process large amounts of data or uh, uh, do, do anything that might be slow. When things are fast, then, then, then you know, having them uh, be tightly coupled is fine. So lastly, uh, checkpoint finality, right? Checkpoints um, is a way of allowing fast syncs. Um, so the idea here is uh, we can fix a state as everybody has agreed to it and it's been around long enough that, um, that you know the 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 that that uh, the that the likelihood that there can be a zero day um, that we, nobody has has discovered is extremely low. So it codifies this notion from law, really, of a statute of limitation, right? If if a zero day occurs and 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 it was taken advantage of, but the effect is way in the past because of the cascading nature of, of cause and effect, it's, it's really hard to, to, um, to, to handle. And, and of course, uh, you know, record keeping and so forth, the, you know, the, 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 the how good the evidence is, uh, pr preservation of evidence, that's also a problem, right? And from a, from a, a, a blockchain viewpoint, there's storage reclamation and, and things like that. That, that is, that's, that's very useful. To summarize, uh, the, Four sh shades of finality are log finality, right? This is this is what we're mostly dealing with in 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 in, in this workshop, right? The the what, what the consensus is, is deciding on transaction order finality, which is determining the state uh, without necessarily computing it, 
and state finality is is actually reaching agreement on on that state and of course checkpoint finality is knowing when you can garbage collect so that people don't have to grow storage uh, 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 you know linearly uh, on, on, on time and and, and transaction uh, uh, processing which matters it's, it's pretty obvious right so so, so state be, because it's implicitly it named uh, can be recomputed. So transaction order finality is more important. Right? You can derive state from transaction order. The thing about uh, checkpointing is consensus algorithms deal with independent faults. Right? A Byzantine general does not make an honest general become faulty or corrupt. But that's exactly how viruses and worms work. Right? They, they, you have a zero day, they can infect all the machines uh, and that's, those are common mode faults and cannot be handled by, by BFT type of, of, of mechanism. So you need some other mechanism to try to handle that. And checkpointing is a principled way of allowing us to say, once a fault is identified, how do we determine um, you know, what should be the case, right? We, we, want, we, want, we, want, identi we want to identify uh, a past state that is uh, before the zero day has been uh, exploited and maybe uh, replay transactions from there through uh, bug fixed code. This is a governance issue, of course, there, you may want to skip some of the, of the, of the code, uh, I mean, some of the transactions. Uh, anyways, um, so to, to, to wrap up, um, you know the what we what what we're presenting is is kind of trying to crystallize and and provide a more nuanced uh, view of finality, um, and I look forward to uh, the discussions. Thank you.